Well, I don't know if some of you remember this game that we have sometimes on a Wednesday night. In fact, it's very popular. It's called the shopping game. And in the shopping game, you get a shopping list, like the one perhaps your mum makes, and you get to choose a trolley or a basket. I think I'll have a trolley. And then you take it in turns. And what happens is what you've got to do is remember, you see, what's where. So um, that's not on my list, so that's no good for me. Oh, brown flakes or fruity flakes or something. Yep. And the idea is it's the first person to finish their trolley or their basket that wins the game. And I'm doing very well because this is the way I've set up the game. Eggs, yes, I need some eggs. I oh, don't need any donuts. Nope. What's that? Oh, wash powder. No, oh dear, I've got to remember where these all are. Oh, water, yeah. Unless it's milk. Is it milk? No, water. Some uh, peppers, yeah, I need some peppers. I've nearly finished. Oh, shower gel, yeah. Oh, I only need one more thing. Oh, wash powder. No, oh, yogurt, no. Yay, toy monster, and there we are. I've got all the things. So I've won, <laughs> but not really, because I'm playing on my own. There we are. Hello, everyone. Really nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. And a special hello to Jimmy Owen and Sam York, who I think might be watching today. And I heard from their mum yesterday, and she sends everyone her love. So hi, guys. I've put your name up, names up behind me. So the shopping game. It's been a bit tricky going shopping just lately, hasn't it? Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have to queue. Mums and dads, when they go shopping, have to queue maybe for quite a while. And then when you get in the shops, you haven't always got what you need, but it's a lot better than it was. It's much, much easier than it was. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we were celebrating VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, do you remember? And uh, one of the biggest hardships that people had to deal with during the war years was rationing, it was called rationing, and it went on after the war as well. I think it probably lasted about eight years. And um, that was because there was not enough food for everyone. So they set up the Ministry of Food, and I think Mr. Wilson was the minister in charge, and he was in charge of making sure there was enough food for everyone. There was just about enough. And everyone in the family, even a baby, had a ration book, a little blue book, and inside the book each week, you were told what you could have. And it might be one egg or two ounces of butter. Um, and people were quite short of food and they were often quite hungry, but it worked as a system, it did work. And today in our story, we're going to be hearing about what happened when Joseph explained to the king, Pharaoh, about the famine. There wasn't a famine during the war. Um, the reason there wasn't enough food was because the ships couldn't get across uh, the sea with the usual food supplies that British people needed. But this is a proper famine that's going to happen here. And if you remember, Joseph was taken out of prison to explain the king's dreams. And what we've got now is a situation where there's going to be seven good years followed by seven bad years. Ooh. Let me just show you the picture of um, Joseph explaining that. There's Joseph, and he's explaining that to the king, who's listening very carefully, and he's looking at very serious, isn't he? Because it's serious news. When the king of Egypt heard Joseph explain his dreams, he was horrified. He knew that in spite of seven years of plentiful harvests, the seven years of shortage that were to follow would bring famine, do you remember that word? And death. But Joseph had something more to say. Your majesty, he went on respectfully, may I suggest what you should do? Choose one of your men and put him in charge of all food supplies. He can supervise the storing of grain during the years of bumper crops so that there will be enough to feed everyone during the years when the crops fail. That way the people won't starve. Well, the 
king was very pleased with Joseph and his wise advice. And he said, you shall be that man. You have shown how wise you are. So I shall put you in charge of everything that needs to be done in the whole of Egypt. You shall be my new prime minister. So he was in prison. He's been a slave. And now he's the prime minister. On the king's orders, Joseph was given a fine chariot. Only very special people had chariots. Servants of his own and rich clothes and jewels. Joseph had learned to trust God and to do his work well as a slave and even as a prisoner. And he set about his new important duties in just the same way. He traveled the length and breadth of Egypt and in every city he gave orders for huge storage buildings to be built. And the idea was that during the seven good years, all the surplus grain would be stored in these huge buildings, ready for the seven bad years. And I think this must be Joseph in his very posh clothes. Well, seven years of wonderful harvests brought huge quantities of grain, and Joseph arranged for it to be stored all over the country. Before the seven years were up, the new storehouses were so full that even Joseph had lost count of how much grain they held. Then came the lean and hungry years when no crops would grow. Joseph was busier than ever, selling the grain and seeing that it was fairly distributed. Soon, people living in nearby countries who were also hit by the famine, heard that there was grain to be had in Egypt and they traveled to Joseph to ask if they too could buy grain to take home to their own lands. And I wonder if you can guess who some of those people are. And if you come back tomorrow, you'll find out who they are that come to Egypt. Oh, it's very exciting. It's a wonderful story, isn't it? Of how God has developed this boy into such an amazing man with such incredible skills. It's, it's a wonderful story and very encouraging to all of us in these times, I think, to trust God um, with all the things that we're going to need to see us through. So we're just going to say a prayer now. We're going to put our hands together or hands still. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you know the end from the beginning. We thank you that you are God and sovereign God. And we trust to you all the things that are going on in our own country right now. And ask you, Lord, to give great wisdom to our leaders. And help us, Lord, in our families to do our best as well. And help us to trust you with our lives. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember to come back tomorrow. We're just going to do our blessing. We have a look hand and a look hand. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. And the Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.